the bird was perched upon a pole. The bird was perched upon a pole. Over a hundred years ago, this man's passionate interest in sound led him to specialize in teaching the deaf and dumb and people with defective speech. This passionate interest also led him along another very different path and caused him to invent something which changed the world. Now that I have a telephone, it means the world to me. For I can speak to anyone and they can speak to me. I simply talk and they can hear, that's all I have to do. So if you're on the telephone, then I can talk to you. The telephone, the telephone, it's all the latest craze. The old electric telephone, sensation of the age. Alexander Graham Bell was born in Edinburgh in 1847 and educated in the universities of Edinburgh and London. He later emigrated to Canada and then to America to teach people with defective speech. And it was in his workshop in Boston that he spoke the first recognizable sentence by telephone. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Mr. Watson was Bell's assistant. It was the 10th of March, 1876. The man with the passionate interest in sound had achieved something which had eluded so many others. For although experimenters had succeeded in sending musical notes and other sounds over a wire, no one until now had been able to build a machine that could send recognizable words. The telephone had arrived. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. As a consequence of Mr. Bell's ingenuity and diligence, it is now possible to speak to people along an electric wire. The machine is quite safe and is suitable for ladies and even children. From the report, it seems that with such instruments in every corner of the country, we shall never have to leave our houses and yet be able to continue with our daily business. Amazing as it sounds, conversation can be carried on with ease and privacy without ever having to leave your own home. Yes, I can hear you. By the end of that same dramatic year, Bell was manufacturing telephones for commercial sale. And in 1878, he actually demonstrated his invention to Queen Victoria. It was a successful demonstration, and it resulted in an order to install telephones at both Balmoral and Windsor. Unlike a demonstration to one man, who, when he was invited to test the device, said, Great Scott, it talks, and nearly dropped the receiver. It was the age of the great painters, Renoir, Cezanne, Degas and Monet. An age when man's technical ingenuity was beginning to express itself in many different ways. Electric light was still in its infancy, and a man called Edison had patented the phonograph. But not all inventions were welcome, and a man had to walk in front of each new-fangled motor car carrying a red flag. <laughs> But working in America on his version of the telephone was that great inventor, Thomas Alva Edison. As we have heard, he was already famous for his invention of the phonograph. In the year directly following Bell's great achievement, Edison succeeded in making an improved telephone transmitter, which was based upon the properties of carbon. And in many ways, Edison's transmitter complemented Bell's receiver perfectly. And so, in 1880, the two companies, Bells and Edison's, amalgamated. And a telephone was produced that embodied the best of both inventions. This historic amalgamation resulted in a telephone which, despite many improvements, has remained basically the same until the present day. But how does it work? Hello. How was Bell able to use his knowledge of human speech to develop something to enable it to be heard across vast distances along a wire? Yes. Well, when we speak, air passes from our lungs via our vocal cords and emerges as tiny vibrations in the air around us. In other words, as sound. The bird was perched 
erect upon a pole. Nowadays, we can actually show these very tiny changes in air pressure accurately, like this. So when words were spoken into Bell's telephone, the tiny vibrations we've seen that caused the feather to move and the line on the oscilloscope to break up caused a small diaphragm to vibrate in exactly the same way. And the vibrations in this diaphragm were converted into electrical current and passed along the telephone wire to the person at the other end. And when the person on the other end answered, the process was reversed. So that was what Alexander Graham Bell and later Thomas Alva Edison had succeeded in doing. They had produced something that really was about to change the world. As I sit working at my desk when there's a busy ring, I listen in attentively, it is the latest thing. For businessmen it's vital to pass things down the line. If we didn't have the telephone, we'd never have the time. The telephone, the telephone, it's all the life Everywhere, industry was expanding. We were moving into an age of rapid development, an age in which communications, although vital, were sadly underdeveloped. Before Bell's invention, messages could only be sent via an early form of telegraph. And remember, telegraphy was relatively slow because of the time it takes to draft a telegram and to deliver it. The only alternative was an efficient postal service. Or, if time was not at a premium and the distance was not too great, a message could be sent by hand. There were just no other ways available. And so the telephone slowly began to change the way in which we communicated with one another. And it began to change the appearance of our cities as well. The earliest telephone wires were all carried overhead and they had to be high enough to clear the tops of the buildings. So these strange-looking structures grew up. But the growing telephone network served industry and the public with increasing coverage and with increasing efficiency. By 1912, when the Postmaster General took over the National Telephone Company, a unified telephone system was available throughout most of Britain. Henry Ford had produced his famous car. Blerio had flown across the English Channel. And disaster had overtaken the great Titanic. But other events were overtaking Europe, and shadows were beginning to reach out across the entire continent. The Great War started, a terrible war that was to take millions of lives and to last for four years. But even at this dreadful time, the telephone had its part to play. It was used on the battlefield. My sergeant major said I was to use the telephone Not to call for some more ammo, but to get a posting hole But German guns and German shells smashed down the blinking line, sir So when at last I did get through, I spoke to Bill the Kaiser The telephone The telephone was also used back at home to link the factories making the munitions of war and to help coordinate the war effort. But eventually, it all came to an end, leaving the daunting task of reconstruction in many European towns and cities. But it's vital you connect me immediately. You have to have it quickly. Call me back yes, directly, the supplies arrive. Of course, these food supplies are urgent, you know aren't my they? number. Now, ring me directly. It's impossible. 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 It's as it helped in the vast program of reconstruction and rebuilding. Telephone calls crossed frontiers as the invention opened up communication between people. It really was helping to change the world and helping to change us as well. Now generally the familiar daffodil or cam shape. And it's because of this model that we still say today, he hung up on me, or she left the telephone off the hook. But 
but the telephone contained a great many improvements. Just as the telephone service itself offered a great many improvements. Boring party of Charles's the other day, wasn't it? Look, I thought if you could come, you could bring your motor. Then we could go for a little spin. Hello, America. Hello, America. This is London calling you. This is London calling you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, London. This is New York. Yes, I hear you. The time here is 4.30 p.m. What time is it with you? It's 11.30 here. And raining. In 1927, the first regular link between Britain and America was opened. Everywhere, special ships were laying cables as the telephone continued its journey across continents and across the world. Hello, Mitchie. We are first. The first dials had appeared. This meant that it was now possible to dial the number you wanted and to get through automatically instead of having to ask the operator to make the connection for you. These dials were set into the base of the daffodil or candlestick telephones. But in 1929, the post office introduced a totally new shape in a wide range of colours the very first plastic telephone. Many find it hard to believe that plastics even existed then, but they did. And as the telephone was changing, so the exchanges were changing too. We've chunks and toll and telegrams and all exchanges too. Just telephone and we will pass you through. Bring ever corner or twain. We've now half our slow. Want a little warning to make you get off in the morning? Is your home on fire? Do you want to send a wire? Just lift up the receiver. That's all you've got to do. but dark shadows were beginning to stretch out yet again. In a world where the telephone was established as a means of communication, other, more potent forces were at work. In World War II, the telephone played an even more important part in the conflict maintaining vital links within our great munitions factories and with our forces at battlefronts throughout the world. Indeed, so vital were these telephone links that on the home front, operators often stayed at their posts throughout air raids, keeping the lines open. Some of them were girls not long out of school, yet they stuck to their jobs instead of going to the shelters. They were even issued with gas masks with special built-in transmitters. The calls had to get through. Enemy bombing destroyed a great deal of telephone equipment. Lines were smashed and exchanges demolished. Top priority had to be given to the repair and maintenance of telephone services. They were vital to the total war effort. Peace eventually came, and with it the mammoth task of reconstruction. It was an enormous challenge. There were shortages of men and of equipment, and the factories that had been making armaments had to be converted to make telephone equipment and all the other consumer goods needed in Britain. And with this transformation in post-war Britain came exciting new ideas, even new words. Subscriber trunk dialing a system inaugurated in 1958. 
There were other new words too that were to have a profound effect on our telephone system. Words like transistor and words like Sputnik. Now the telephone was beginning to change shape again as the pace of development continued. Not only could we dial our numbers to virtually anywhere in the world, now it was possible to have push buttons as well. An easy way of peeling tomatoes is to place the tomatoes... We could use our telephones to hear recipes, cricket scores, weather forecasts, pop tunes, even bedtime stories. Roadworks causing delays, especially at peak periods. As the fir shoots appear, draw a little soil over them as a protection against frost. This exhibition is called Abstraction. A few mispatches may form for a time in suburban areas. Even the famous old shapes were not forgotten. And still the developments continue. Because so many of us have telephones, it is no longer possible to store all the numbers satisfactorily in paper directories. So directory inquiry operators now use computers to find the numbers we want. Diversion on no reply service. And well on the way is a telephone system that will be able to answer back. These symbols will enable subscribers to have calls transferred automatically and to take advantage of technological advances. Diversion on ringtone no reply service is now in operation. The telephone has come a very long way indeed. And what of the future? What are the next chapters in this story? What is going to happen to the instrument we now take so much for granted? The future must depend upon ideas still untried. Upon developments that have not yet been thought of. But one thing is certain. The telephone will continue to help change the world in which we live and will continue to serve us. And the kind of telephones we'll have in the future? Well, these will depend upon the kind of telephones we want. After all, telephones have always depended upon the people who use them. Basic diversion is now cancelled. And I thought if you could come, you could come along and bring your motor. Then we could go for a little spin afterwards, can we? Enemy gun positions in my sight. Map reference. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Now that I have a telephone, it means the world to me. For I can speak to anyone and they can speak to me. I simply talk and they can hear, that's all I have to do. So if you're on the telephone, then I can talk to you. The telephone, the telephone, it's all the latest page. The all electric telephone sensation. 